What's good YouTube? Today we're going to be going over the class that I'm going to be maining for Season 2 of Dragonflight, the close contenders, and why they were all solid picks for me to be spending the majority of my time playing them next season. As I'm sure most of you guys have seen if you've been following the channel for a while, I've been a Beast Mastery Hunter main for the majority of Season 1 so far, dabbling in the other two Hunter specs as well. I did tend to find myself on the BM Hunter the most. I really enjoyed the spec coming into Dragonflight. It has a lot more depth to it than usual. I know that people still think is a very brain dead spec, but that comment is not too accurate anymore i would have definitely agreed with that in the past but there is definitely some more depth to this spec as we came into this new expansion that being said though i'm not arguing that it's not a simple spec it definitely is and that is one of the reasons why i actually really enjoy it because it allows me to focus more on the mechanics and those higher keys that i was running and also when i'm streaming i can chat to you guys with ease i've always been a huge fan of the whole hunter class fantasy i love having the freedom of going out into the world and picking whatever pet i want to take into combat with me and this is why i've tend to find myself more on the Beast Mastery Hunter. I'm not a huge fan of the way marksmanship has gone over the recent years, being that we are basically never allowed to take a pet anymore due to our lone wolf talent. That being said though, I did have a lot of fun with marksmanship, especially at the beginning of the season, just deleting packs basically by myself with the insane burst potential that that spec has. It really was a lot of fun, but towards the end of the season, I really did find myself just enjoying Beast Mastery Hunter that much more, especially with the removal of Double Tap. There was a few builds that I played around with with Beast Mastery towards the end of the season, for example, the Dire Pack build that I recommended you guys to try out, having some insane prior damage potential for the cost of some AoE, but still dealing that incredible sustained AoE damage that the Beast Mastery Hunter brings. Talents like this Dire Pack talent are really fun and engaging, allowing you to just spam that kill command button over and over, getting that high in your rotation that you tend to suffer from not having as a BM Hunter. Talents like this and Call of the Wild and even Aspect of the Wild are talents that I'd really like to see have play because it it does give you that high in your rotation that you can look forward to pressing instead of basically just being a flatline spec that's always dealing decent damage but it never peaks in troughs. Hunter wasn't too strong at the start of the season apart from the insane burst that marksmanship brought but in the high keys that burst damage did fall off and also for all of the hunter specs we definitely had a problem going into those high keys due to our survivability. I know I definitely had a bit of a wobble at the start of the season where I started gearing up my balance druid just because in those higher tyrannical keys I was getting one shot by things that other classes were just eating for breakfast. So that was really annoying but over the course of this season Hunter has gained more and more buffs to damage and also tankiness which is made for a really complete spec towards the end of the season. There was one point where I think they buffed Beast Mastery a little bit too much and we were dealing some absurd damage but for the most part towards the end of the season I was able to top overalls in pretty much most keys that I ran. Even the higher ones it just definitely was a struggle to get into those higher keys playing a non-meta spec. Overall I have had a lot of fun playing Mythic plus this season and I think a lot of that is due to the class that I picked. I'm a really big fan of the Hunter class and it was very close to staying my main for next season. I will definitely still be playing it, don't you worry. However, I think I'm going to put it on a bit of a backseat and give something else a whirl for next season. After running probably the most amount of Mythic Plus I ever have this season, Beast Mastery did get a little bit stale and boring towards the end of the season, which was unfortunate but basically I think it's just down to a lack of complexity at those higher levels. Don't get me wrong, there is definitely stuff that you can still min max but in comparison to other classes it does that lack that little bit of depth and so after a whole season of playing it it did get a little bit boring to me like i mentioned with it being a flatline spec as well having no real high in the rotation i had to get myself a puzzle box which luckily i got at 421 just to give it that high in the rotation where you're doing some extra burst i feel it's really needed for a spec I and mean, unfortunately beast mastery does lack in that aspect although going into next season depending on if this aspect of the wild build comes through you might actually actually see that peak in the rotation. The last thing that I'm underwhelmed by by the class as a whole is the fact that you're basically just firing arrows, obviously apart from survival, although I haven't played too much of that this season. But when you've got mages combusting next to you, you've got enhancement shamans firing out chain lightnings every three seconds, and then you're just sat 40 yards away firing some arrows while your pet are in amongst 15 mobs and you can't see what's going on. I just feel it really does lack that animation aspect that draws me to the class even more. So that is my final negative to the class. But other than that, I did have a very good time in this first season of this expansion. Moving on to the next class that was definitely a strong contender for my main next season as well. 
I don't know if you heard me slip it in a minute ago, but it is the Druid and specifically the Balanced Druid. I've always had a really soft spot for Druid just because it was the first class I ever started out with back in the days of Vanilla WoW. I think everybody secretly got a tie to the class they first ever leveled when they first experienced their journey through World of Warcraft. And the Druid is definitely mine. I enjoy three out of the four specs at least of the Druid. I've never really tried healing, but I'm sure that I would like the Resto Druid if I did give it a bash. I really like the simplicity of Guardian Druid. Tanking is daunting enough as it is, so being able to jump into tanking with a relatively simple tank like a Guardian Druid is always great news. And although it's simple, it definitely is a lot of fun with your Incarn and Rage of the Sleeper windows where you're pretty much able to pull whatever you please, live it, and also do some incredible DPS. For those of you that have seen my fun tier list as well, I really rate the Feral Druid coming into Dragonfly. I've never been a fan of this spec at all, but I feel like they've really mastered the Feral Druid coming to this expansion. It is probably one of the most complete feeling specs in the game. The AoE is amazing, funneling that big AoE into some funnel damage with your Apex procs as well. And that also cleaving as well just feels unreal. The only problem with cat form is I don't like the idea of sitting in a cat form all day and not being able to change out my transmogs and stuff like that. Moving on to Boomy then, this spec is the one that really has a soft spot in my heart. I love the aesthetic of this class. Don't worry, not a moon can form. I make sure that I'm always sitting in Glyph of the Stars. But crashing down those full moons and all those shooting stars flying about all over the place really is unique unique and feels true to the spec. I really like how this spec has actually developed over time. The playstyle is really engaging too with some dots that you have to maintain and upkeep, especially this expansion with your waning twilight debuff, but that is also paired with some amazing burst potential as well. So specifically for target swapping, if you know that there's a mob spawning that you have to swap to and nuke down, then Boomy is amazing for that if you can prepare for it. Like I mentioned with the full moon, there is very few things in the game that feel as good as seeing a full moon crash down on a bunch of enemies, generating you massive AP and dealing some massive burst damage and finally this expansion we have been able to overlap our star falls once again which is always one of my favorite parts of the balanced druid so this spec is definitely my favorite of the druids and it was a really tough choice for me not to main it next season but i am definitely going to be keeping this geared on the side and i'll be playing it on stream and maybe even making some youtube content for it as well because at the end of the day the druid is probably one of the best classes that i could pick for streaming as it allows me to experience all the different types of roles in world of warcraft on the same class which is especially nice for viewer keys which is something i'm planning to do a lot of next season helping you guys get your keystone masters or your keystone heroes depending on the group comp i could just swap around go tank healer melee dps if i need to but preferably a ranged dps so it was a very close contender for one of my mains but the druid is going to be one of my main alts along with the hunter so that leaves us with my main for next season Quick, have a little guess in the comments before I move on. So my main for season two of Dragonflight is going to be, drum roll, the Shaman. Playing this spec in beta, I don't think I've ever had that much fun in World of Warcraft. If you guys have been around here for a while now, you'll know that I was absolutely spamming out the enhancement gameplays on the beta. I was having an absolute whirl of a time playing that spec. If you're enjoying the video, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And it was definitely a tough choice not to main it in season one, but I did go with the Beast Mastery Hunter. But this time it's back and it's back for good. We are going Enhancement Shaman in Season 2. Because I focused so much on the Beast Mastery Hunter in Season 1, I don't think I've ever been that loyal to a spec for a whole season. I didn't actually end up leveling the Shaman until very recently. I just got it to max level. And I've been picking up the Enhancement again, which was honestly very daunting at first. Like, that rotation is very complex. And there's lots of build varieties as well, which make it even more daunting. However, after spending some time on it and realizing that it's not actually that bad, I got to understand the spec at a basic level. Level and I am once again having an absolute blast playing the Shaman. I've dabbled mainly with the physical build of Enhancement, but I've also very recently, as in just yesterday, started trying out the Elementalist build as well. Granted, I don't really have any good gear on my Shaman just yet, but so far I think I am preferring the physical build, although the Elementalist build did surprise me. I didn't actually think that I would like tab targeting and spreading out those Flame Shock amplifiers through my Lava Lash, but once I got a bit more comfortable with it, I started to have a really good time. Regardless of the build you're playing, the feral spirits resets feels unreal i started to really enjoy using my hailstorm procs as well which i've hated for so long but finally they won me over and i'm really having a good time with it next season the tier set is looking mega fun turning sundering into a mini cooldown which is slightly counterintuitive to using it as we have been in season one as an aoe stop however turning this short cooldown into a mini burst window through those giga buff chain lightnings and also refunding the maelstrom from them and giving you extra mastery feels amazing having that up for every 
single pack or even two times a pack is going to feel ridiculous. I cannot wait. And also I have seen a potential build for my absolute favorite build for next season, which is the deeply rooted elements build going down into that Thorum's invocation, which whenever you proc your ascendance through your storm strike, which is by the way, one of the best feeling moments you can ever get in this game. It just adds on to that by only having to spam wind strike and that also firing off chain lightnings every time you go above five maelstrom. It's obviously very RNG based, but that is the fun of it. Getting the procs in the right situation and firing off those wind strikes that are also firing out chain lightnings at the same time, you really just cannot match that. It's not all about enhancement though. Elemental has always been a really fun spec to me. Firing off those lava bursts, especially in AoE situations where you're able to funnel those lava bursts into priority targets through spreading your flame shocks out feels stupendous. Though coming into Dragonflight, Elemental does feel a little bit clunky to me, especially in AoE. I just feel like there is so many buttons to press. There are so many procs to consume with the right spells. Every time you press an ability, that gives you a proc of something that you then have to consume with the right spell on your next global. Otherwise, you're going to lose a ton of DPS. So it is definitely an intimidating spec to get used to. But I'm sure once I learn the priority system and how the spec actually functions, then it will all fall into place and I'll have a great time with this spec. Adding on top of that then to the Shaman as a whole, the audio and visual feedback for this class is just on another level compared to anything else in the game. Certain abilities that you press feel really impactful they could literally hit for one damage and they would still feel amazing to press just because of how they sound and how they look. Whoever does the design for this spec needs a bloody pay rise. Like I mentioned with the druid as well I'm not too into healing although I've never tried it so maybe I'm just being stubborn but Resto is actually one of the healers that has caught my eye, so I definitely won't be reluctant to give the Resto Shaman a go. It seems to do some pretty insane DPS as well for a healer, which is something I'm never going to say no to. Like, that's probably one of the most fun parts of the spec. The class as a whole has amazing utility. Obviously, it's one of the very few classes in the game that brings Bloodlust, so I have that going for me, because the majority of the time I'm actually going to be pugging. You have all your different totems for all your different scenarios. Shaman is also a really nice class for dealing with the afflicted affix that we're going to be introducing to next season so overall for me i think it's time for me to give the shaman a go so the shaman is my pick going into season two of dragonflight let me know down in the comments below what you guys are going for next season as well if you enjoyed the video then leave a like down there as well subscribe to your boy if you're new and until next time i'll catch you guys later